Speed running is the track and field of the gaming world. It spans from the frantic 100 meter dash. I feel the need, the need for speed. To the endurance challenging long distance marathon. Time. <laughs> we saved one hour, guys. It's produced incredible, unforgettable moments. We have managed to raise, oh, time to look down here, $2,122,144. Thank you so much. And hilarious ones that some competitors wish they could forget. All right, that puts me into the wall and I zip through here. And die. Bullshit, that would, that has never happened before. <laughs> But where did this gaming niche begin? Well, ever since 1980s arcade cabinets were able to record high scores, players have been obsessed with pushing the limits of what we thought was possible. And as video games became more and more popular, that obsession with being the absolute best at a specific game began to find its way into mainstream media. While The Wizard was dope, Canadian kids growing up in the 90s actually had a chance to live that experience with Video and Arcade Top 10. What's up gamers? Video and Arcade Top 10 is in the house with music, movies, tips, plus the latest and greatest video games on the planet. Hosted by YTV legend Nicholas Pickles, children were challenged to beat parts of games faster than their opponents to win fabulous prizes. Podcast number six. Sarah, what's he taking home? Read on. Mark's got four great Brady books to keep you reading for hours. The computer camps and the computer technology infinity. Either that and out of this world, Star Trek puzzle. And awkwardly pose for the camera. Game number two is Justin. You're gaining smarts. We totally appreciate it by Andrew Lancaster from Kingston. And on the game scene today, we have Mitchell. Player number three today is also Mitchell. But speedrunning as we know it today really took off in 1994 with Doom. The creation of the LMP Hall of Fame, which produced Doom honorific titles, eventually led to Compete N, an online database that preserved demos of the game's most impressive speedruns and kept track of those records. Over time, the success of Compete N spawned similar sites like the Speed Demos Archive and later Speedrun.com, which expanded into a wider variety of games. But speedrunning has grown a lot since its humble beginnings on obscure, hard to navigate websites of the late 90s and early 2000s. These days, most people know about the community through events like Games Done Quick, a twice yearly speedrunning marathon that raises millions of dollars for charitable causes. Speaking of which, now would be a good time to read some donations. Uh, Josh, no one is donating. Wow. Wow. GDQ draws thousands of viewers on Twitch and is often the most popular stream on the platform during the weeks in which it runs. And since 2010, the event's altruistic cause and its appeal to gamers' nostalgia has helped to raise the profile of speedrunning. And these days, you can bet your ass that there's a speedrun for pretty much any game you can think of. From the dumpster fire stuffed into a cartridge, Superman 64. So this might not surprise you, you can go out of bounds in this video game. It, this is a very finely crafted video game. There's no problems whatsoever. This is intended. To Burger King's stalking simulator, Sneak King. I know when I see who's feeding me, I just don't want them to feed me. Like that's, that's. Well, if it was lost. him, would, you probably wouldn't want the any food from that guy. Would you want some random dude in a costume to just like no. shove a burger in your face? And I would totally want a random dude in a costume to shove a burger in my face. And every game has a variety of speedrunning categories. From simply beating one as fast as possible, to achieving 100% completion, to avoiding glitches, to tool-assisted runs. Okay, now this is an important part of the run. Josh needs to provide a word-perfect delivery of this next line. Speedrunning itself is a brooding dis- Fuck! Again! 
speedrunning itself is a grueling discipline, one that demands extreme dedication for mastery, usually in the form of hundreds to thousands of hours of practice. And let's just say the amount of patience it requires makes speedrunning not exactly ideal for everyone. Like, I probably shouldn't even play again, because shit like this will just happen again. Like, look, that, fucking that, fucking that. Oh, I should probably fucking quit this game. Look, I fucking put my head through my wall. Why? On top of being able to keep their cool, speedrunners need the endurance to last through hours-long runs, and the unshakable self-belief to overcome insanely difficult challenges. Okay, <laughs> I did not expect that. And of course, let's not forget the creativity to come up with new ways to break your favorite games. Okay, Worcester said that you can walk through walls. I saw it in his run, so let's give that a shot. <laughs> oh, cool, hold on, it's Celadon City. This is where he gets the fresh water to beat the game. Oh, what? <laughs> okay, well, there's water here, I guess. Okay, so <laughs> that's actually a uh, pretty major glitch that uh, was discovered quite a long time ago. It's called the uh, the Duke of oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so soft locking the run earlier costs a bunch of time. We're gonna try and make it up by doing the what is death skip. Yeah, yeah. Of course, things aren't always perfect. Even the best runners mess up, especially in marathon environments. At home, you can always reset. But when you're speed running on a live broadcast, surrounded by people and dying to take a leak, weird shit can happen. Bomb battle right here. And dang, the lift off failed. Speedrunning can be a pretty temperamental art. You're either able to fully manipulate the game's RNG, or you're entirely at its mercy. And while some games are completely skill-based, there are others that require more than a little luck. Please, Lion. Come on. Come on, Lion. Oh, Do oh, it! Come on! Yo! Come on. Yo! Yes! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Please, Come on. Lion! Please! Come on. Got this Come on, Lion! Come on, Lion! Do it! Got this! Go! Go! Okay, no! Okay, okay. Come on, Snake! Right. Please, Snake! Kill it! Kill it, Snake! Oh no. my god! No. Please! No! 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 no. 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 <laughs> it's moments like that that make watching a speed run so exciting. Seeing someone walk the razor's edge between setting a new world record or suffering devastating failure is enthralling. Unfortunately for speedrunners, there's not really much in the way of head-to-head -head competition. Organized leagues and tournaments just don't work, as some of the most interesting and complicated runs can be hours long. Uh, the goal that we have to reach is $250,000. So if we can do that by about the three and a half hour mark, I'm going to be showing off something really cool within the game. I think you guys are going to like it a lot, so. 
but speedrunning can be a riveting spectator experience. It's entertaining to see people bend your favorite game over their knee until it snaps in half and all the weird glitches flood out. And it's not just the exploits. The best speedrunners in the world are masters of their craft. They spend hours grinding a game, studying all of its intricacies, and perfecting their execution to do incredible, virtuosic things. Ultimately, speedrunning is a love letter to the game. You have to enjoy the game casually prior to getting to speedrunning. Like, you know, I don't think anyone can ever get into speedrunning purely for a competitive component. You have to like the game you play, or else I, I feel like it will fall apart. I've never heard of anyone who, who speed runs to become number one, and not not for like, you know, for, to become number one and do it for a financial glory or whatever, you know, e penis size or whatever it may be, and not like for the game they like. Speed running is to esports what the Olympics is to traditional sports. During the Olympics, people are drawn in by the 100 meter dash, the luge, or the high jump, while at other times during the year, they might not pay much attention. And the same can be mostly said for speedrunning. While the speedrunning community keeps up with the records and personal bests of its competitors year-round, twice annually at AGDQ and SGDQ, the rest of the gaming world tunes in to enjoy the spectacle too. Speedrunning doesn't have to be the next great esport, and that's okay. It can just be something that's occasionally fun to watch and marvel at. Jesus, this guy's good. And time. That's a new world record. And time. I'm Josh Burry, and this has been my speed run of what is speed running. How'd I do? 12 minutes and 11 seconds. Oh, bad, not bad. Not bad, but not a series record either. Yeah, I don't think we're ever gonna beat PogChamp. You're not gonna come in? You weren't gonna come in with the...